Uh, hello, Graham. So Graham uh, Baker is my guest today. He's an award-winning uh, business photographer from uh, Graham Baker Photography. Now, I appreciate the name pretty much gives it away, but Graham, tell us a little bit, what, uh, little bit more about what you do and for how long you've been doing this. Uh, well, I mean, you said it yourself there. I'm, I'm essentially a commercial photographer, so um, anything sort of related to uh, businesses, B2B, that kind of stuff. So, you know, commercial work. So things from, you know, from your headshots to corporate headshots to uh, editorials to advertising photography. Um, I, I also branched out a couple of years ago into 360 virtual tours for, you know, for smaller businesses and things like that. So it's, it's a wide range. I mean, I still do the odd wedding here and there but if you land on my website you don't see any wedding pictures it's it's all about the the sort of the, the commercial side of things and business photography excellent tell, tell me a little bit more about the the virtual photography that sounds really interesting i i'm thinking of estate agents and that those sort of organizations that... yeah well yeah traditionally that's what a lot of photographers went into they started doing the property photography and the and the 360 virtual tour so you create this 360 environment that you know, clients could walk through and explore uh, property and stuff. But what I found was that, that every photographer and their dog was doing that. And, <laughs> and I wanted to approach it from a slightly different angle and looking at how smaller businesses that not necessarily property businesses could actually capitalize on that. So things like uh, Airbnbs, hotels, um, shop fronts, you know, stuff where it's actually important for people to come and visit their their premises and a lot of it stemmed from back from the the sort of pandemic when a lot of businesses couldn't open they needed a way to actually be able to show off their premises or show their facility so that when the doors opened again that people were aware of them and all the rest of it and they get a lot of traction on um social media not, not social media, uh, search engine optimizations google is massive in it as well you know google maps um i, I did a post the other day sort of like throughout the last over the last few years my photographs that I've uploaded for clients and especially the 360 have hit something like three and a half million views wow. and that's that's not for me that's Amazing. for all the people that, that those photos are uploaded onto their Google business profile so that was something that I, I kind of expanded during the pandemic and and I, I continue to do that and, and oddly enough the job I was doing yesterday involved a bit of 360 photography as well excellent uh yep and so how long have you been doing this one now what the 360 or photography in no, general generally you know your your trade um i started the business in um uh 2010 um so but it was it was part time initially i was actually a serving police officer um at the time and then i then transitioned to full time um a little while back Excellent. So, so uh, long, lots of experience excellent okay love that so tell yeah. me uh, just on a little bit of a side track here Who's the first person that comes to mind um, when you think about success? <laughs> That's such a good question, because there, there's so many people I admire in the world who have done well for themselves. I mean, you've got the, I guess, the classics. Um, I mean, I've read Richard Branson's um, biography, which is really good, quite interesting. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, excellent. And also I've read Alan Sugar's not that long ago as well, which was actually pretty good. Um yeah, I guess, I mean, they're the, like the main characters, but I guess, I mean, it's a bit of a vanilla answer, really. But yeah. I'll tell you what, though, I did read, and it, it, although it's success in a slightly different way, but I read Arnold Schwarzenegger's um, biography very recently, and that was excellent. It was such a really inspiring read from someone who's come from literally nothing in Austria yeah. to becoming almost politicised in America and, and the success and his drive. I think that was that that was a key thing for me. But yeah, yeah, I, I guess that's my answer, really. Yeah, no, look, I, I follow a few of his podcasts and he really, really is an amazing guy. Yeah. So you, you talked about COVID earlier, you know, you went through uh, COVID, uh, well, we all did. W were there any business changes that you considered that COVID-19 made, you know, uh, a necessity? Um, well, for me, <laughs> uh, as a photographer, you kind of have to be in the company of others to actually work. <laughs> and obviously that put an end to what I was able to do at the time. So there was a lot of pivoting going on during that period. I mean, you know, I mean, I used to shoot, as I said, a, a wide variety of subjects. And and although I was predominantly business, I think that's where it really I had to sort of pivot towards that, because obviously when 
restrictions started to lift, businesses were the first ones that actually were able to actually open their doors to allow photographers back in to actually work and, and all the rest of it. So I think that's what changed over the last few years where I was I was much more much more focused on working with businesses. And then as I said, the 360 stuff came out of that. Um I guess those were the main pivot points. I mean I also I had to look at how else I could help people. Um so I started doing this um <laughs> it was all came about by accident, but I started a kind of I guess you'd call it a podcast, but it wasn't really it was just something I was doing within my networks of people I knew. And I just started interviewing my friends and other businesses and saying, well, how are you coping with COVID and what are you doing and how are you helping your clients and stuff? And it actually got quite popular. Um, and I was doing, I, I don't know how many ep- episodes, as it sounds a bit like, you know, I'm not, it wasn't a podcast as such, but um, it, it went down quite well and a lot of people enjoyed them. Um, and I would like to start that up again, actually, at some point, but um, at the moment it's kind of shelved because of other priorities, you know, Absolutely, absolutely. So, uh, what would you say is your biggest learning that you've had since you've been a business owner? So, taking you know everything from when when you first started. Obviously, you had you were working with someone else before the the police, and now you're working for yourself. Well, what, what's your biggest learning? Uh, you can't do it alone. Um, uh, is in short, really. Um, you know, I think this one of the big problems with smaller businesses and starting up is that you you feel that you need to sort of keep costs down which which is fair enough but at the same time you can't do everything yourself you can't do your marketing yourself you can't do it's about being able to outsource sort of sensibly and and actually get a return on that and 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 look for advice and speak to experts that know what they're talking about when it comes to like doing the books and this and taxes and 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 for me to sort of uh, as a as a photographer and visual content creator, if you like, is that you know small businesses are trying to create their own pictures. They don't see necessarily that actually it's better to invest now so that they've got the time to then spend time on working on their business. Uh, and and I think that that's a, a massive look, you know, because I was the same as everybody else. I wanted to do everything myself, and I think I probably not wasted time, but. Um, things took a lot longer to move forward because you're too busy doing everything else rather than actually getting out there, networking, marketing and, and, and growing the business. I thought that's probably, Excellent. yeah. No, fantastic answer. And, and what would you say are your aspirations, you know, for your company for the next five years? Um, it's a, it's a difficult one. I'm, I'm, I, as I kind of, before we started the interview, I alluded that I'm, I'm, I've got a couple of personal things going on at the moment that I'm, I'm, I'm finding tough, but that's not, not from a business perspective. It's just, you know, we all have ups and downs in life and all the rest of it. I don't see myself growing massively. Um, I don't want to, I, I think it's that I want to focus on what I think as you get a little bit older, <laughs> You start to think, actually, what is it? What is important to me? You know, what is my purpose, and what what do I want to do? And ultimately, I want to help people get. You know, my little strap line is getting people from behind their business to in front of their brand. You know, helping people to to be known, liked, and trusted, and using um, video and photography to be able to do that. And and for me, I found that I guess something I'd like to do more of, and I, again, touched on it slightly during the pandemic, was actually education, actually teaching people how to do some of this stuff themselves. <laughs> and I know I just sort of said you need to get other people to do stuff, but there's still <laughs> a lot of people out there that don't necessarily have the budget to hire a, a professional photographer or videographer or somebody so that, you know, or understand social media marketing and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm I'm, I'm in the process of building some some training packages that can be done face to face as small groups and possibly building an online sort of not training as such, but supportive community of. Uh, and that's something I'm kind of working on this quarter, I guess, is, is something that I'm, and it's just seeing how it goes. I'm not planning on becoming a massive photography agency or anything like that. I just want to do what I do and be able to spend time with my family. And I think that's the whole point of why I did what I did in the first place. Actually, you know, that's a fantastic insight. It's, you know, your business should always be working around your lifestyle rather yeah. than you having to work around your business. Right. So that, you know, th- thanks for sharing that. And um, do, 
do you have any um and I think, well you've given us a few ideas already but do you have any advice for your 18 year old self what, what would you if you could go back in a time machine what would you say to yourself it's a it's a it's one of those questions isn't it it's 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 a weird one it's like the whole paradox of time travel yeah. it's like well i am where i am and relatively speaking obviously we all have personal problems and bits and pieces going on in our lives that we could probably be doing better or we could earn a bit more money or whatever but if i go back in time i could change things and i might meet people slightly differently in life or go in sliding doors as is the film sliding doors kind of rings the bell but i guess for me if i was going to say something to my younger self i would say learn about stoicism younger <laughs> yeah totally you agree there um take take lessons from this i mean i don't become a complete stoic in in the sense but look at the philosophy of it and and understand what it means to to sort of kind of differentiate what you can do yourself and control your thoughts your actions compared to what else is going on in the world and what you can't control and i think that's in a way, I guess it's fundamental to a lot of coaching um, and, and you're probably better off best place to actually sort of agree or not agree. But most uh, sort of coaching um, processes do seem to have a lot of stoicism philosophy built into it or the other way around, if that makes sense, I think. So I'd say, you know, try and understand the world and and, and be a bit more stoic about what you can and can't do with with your life i think that that's i think that's a you know, acceptance about i can't control that so i'm not going to waste time worrying about it easier said than done of course but <laughs> that's well, um that, that's that, what I'm yeah we, we we have quite a lot of discussions about that uh, about stories and stories um but yeah it's a f fascinating insight fascinating insight um so graham graham baker of um graham baker photography really want to thank you uh, for uh, um, a meeting with us today uh, so much to take away if i wanted to contact you or if anybody listening to this or watching this wanted to contact you how would we go about doing that well i like anything i i, I always want traffic going to my website which is pretty easy really it is my business name grahambakerphotography.com um, i am quite active on social media not so much at the moment just because of we've just gone through the new year and i'm sort of planning on new blog posts and stuff coming out but grahambakerphotography.com uh social media i'm graham baker gbp on pretty much all the platforms so uh um do come and follow do engage i do engage back i'm not one of these post and leave I, I i do like to sort of i'll go in and like other people's posts and um and support them as much as i can so um yeah connect and chat and um yeah Thank you very much. And Graham, I wish you all the best uh, for the future. Thank you.